culturally responsive teaching. Focus on Columbia. The purpose of this video is to provide teachers with general information about Columbia to support culturally responsive practices with immigrant students and families. The information in this video was obtained from research and a home visit with a Colombian family living in the United States. This video will highlight the focus family for my home visit and interview, facts and figures about the country of Colombia, values and norms of Colombian culture, tips for teachers of students specifically from Columbia, and resources for the video's content. Focus Family, Home Visit and Interview. The Colombian family who participated in this project is a young married couple with no children. They are currently living in the United States on student F1 and spouse F2 visas. The couple grew up in the Colombian city of Pereira, located in the Rizaralda department. Their native language is Spanish. The family came to the U.S. because the husband was accepted to a Ph.D. program in engineering at the University of Kentucky. Although the family is expected to return to Columbia after schooling, they are considering a permanent move for prosperity. Both grew up in poverty and hope to make a good living so they can care for their aging parents and other family members in Columbia. Country Facts and Figures Colombia is located in the northwestern part of South America, along the equator. It has two coasts, one on the Pacific Ocean and the other on the Caribbean Sea. Colombia borders the countries of Ecuador, Peru, Brazil, Venezuela, and Panama, and has proximity to the Panama Canal. There are six natural regions in Colombia, including the Andean Mountains, Pacific Lowlands, Amazon Rainforest, Eastern Plains, Caribbean Lowlands, and Insular Area. The unique geography of Colombia, along with its diverse topography and varying regional climates, has resulted in one of the most biodiverse locations in the world. Colombia currently accounts for 10% of Earth's flora and fauna and 14% of the world's endemic species. The national language of Colombia is Spanish, which is spoken by 99.5% of the population. For this reason, Spanish is used for public communication and it is mandatory that Spanish be taught in all schools. It is important to note that Colombian Spanish is widely known for its clear pronunciation and musical intonation, making it a source of pride for the country. Other than Spanish, 37 major languages are spoken, including the two Creole languages, San Andres Creole and Palenquero. Colombia also has at least 65 Amerindian indigenous languages, grouped into 12 language families. The five most significant linguistic families are Chipcha, Arawako, Caribbean, Quechua, and Tupi. Colombia's history dates back to the era of Mesoamerican civilization. Artifacts from the Magdalena River Valley near present-day Bogota reveal hunter-gatherer activity as early as 17,000 to 16,000 BCE during the Paleo-Indian period. Inhabitants continued arriving during the Archaic period into the 5th century when the Amerindian Chipcha family passed through the Isthmus of Panama. In all, about 12 different cultural groups settled in the area by the time of Spanish exploration and colonization, around 1500 CE. After several Spanish settlements were established, including the founding of Cartagena, a principal port, Spanish naval base, and hub for slave ships in the Caribbean, Gonzalo Jimenez de Quesada set out to explore the interior of the continent. He and his conquistadors eventually occupied the territory and founded Santa Fe de Bogota in 1538. Under Spanish rule, Viceroyalty status changed several times for the new kingdom of Granada until it gained permanence in 1739. That is when tension between Spanish natives and descendants began to escalate, along with conflict involving enslaved Africans and the Amerindian encomienda system. In 1810, Venezuela-born Simón Bolivar began the revolution to liberate New Granada from Spanish rule. He achieved this goal proclaiming Gran Colombia on December 7, 1819, but after several years of political division, Gran Colombia dissolved and the future of Colombia was uncertain. Colombia's history following independence was complex and violent. The Liberal Party and Conservative parties began long-term domination of politics, dividing the country economically and politically. The Liberals were anti-colonial and wanted to transform New Granada into a modern nation. The Conservatives wanted to preserve the Spanish colonial legacy of Roman Catholicism and authoritarianism. Multiple changes to the country's name and constitution occurred throughout the 19th century, but political disorder never ceased. By 1899, the country erupted in a civil war called the War of a Thousand Days. 
By the end of 1903, more than 100,000 people were dead and the country was devastated. After attempts to rebuild in the early 1900s, democracy collapsed after the 1946 transfer of power led to extreme violence and assassinations, a period known as La Violencia. For most of the late 20th century, Colombia faced internal conflict at every turn. Declining economics, inflation, social unrest, increasing guerrilla activity, mass civilian militancy, in addition to an underground economy fueled by the narcotics industry, resulted in national instability. Finally, with the 21st century in view, attempts to counter political corruption and save Colombia began with the adoption of the 1991 Constitution known as the Human Rights Constitution. Colombia's current political system is the result of that 1991 Constitution. The country is organized in the form of a unitary, decentralized republic with a presidential system of government. With political plurality, the government includes members from the Conservative Party, Liberal Party, and Independents. The central government has the power to make most political decisions by way of the executive, legislative, and judicial branches. A president and vice president is elected for a four-year term by popular vote. 102 senators are elected to Congress by national vote. The country is divided into 32 departments that are separated into districts and local municipalities. Those districts elect a total of 162 representatives to the House. The education system in Colombia is regulated and enforced by the government, who recognizes education as an individual right and public service that should be provided to all of the country's children. Public schooling is compulsory and free through ninth grade, including basic primary and secondary school and high school. However, some students are fortunate to be able to attend preschool and obtain higher education. The Colombian school year is 40 weeks long, divided into two semesters and separated by a 12-week break. Departments can choose from two academic calendars. One school year runs from February to November, while the other runs from September to June. Unfortunately, the education system in Colombia is plagued with inequality due to widespread poverty, racism, and a lack of access for children living in remote areas. This means that one Colombian student's educational background can be quite different from the next. Culture, Values and Norms Today, Colombia's population of about 50 million includes many diverse and authentic cultures. Africans, Amerindians, and Europeans, mostly from Spain, along with smaller populations of Jews, Arabs, and Romani Gypsies contribute to the culture of modern Colombia. Colombia has one of the most collectivist cultures in the world. A collectivist culture prioritizes group solidarity over individual goals. Colombians are willing to sacrifice individual benefits for the greater good. Family and social groups are extremely loyal, forming united networks of support when there is a need within the group. This loyalty prevents conflict and strengthens group relationships. Collectivist culture is also collaborative, meaning that groups gather and share input to determine solutions when needed. Colombia's constitution grants its people freedom of religion, the right to profess one's religious beliefs, and it prohibits discrimination based on religion. 73% of Colombians are affiliated with the Roman Catholic Church, while 14% identify as Protestant, 11% atheist or agnostic, and less than 2% as other religions. Since Catholicism is the dominant religion in Colombia, the faith is deeply infused in the country's culture and plays a significant role in the lives of those who grow up in the church. For this reason, Catholic rituals mark rites of passage for most children, including baptism, first communion, and confirmation. Another rite of passage specific to girls turning 15 years old in Colombia is the quinceañera. With roots in Latin America, the Fiesta de Quince Años marks the transition from childhood to young womanhood, typically involving a princess dress and an extravagant party. Teacher Tips for Cultural Responsiveness Tip number one. For teachers of students with roots in Colombia, it is important to understand that Colombians love their home country and are proud of their culture. Therefore, students may prefer being recognized as Colombian rather than Latino or Hispanic because their specific nationality is a defining characteristic of who they are and there is a deep desire to maintain a connection with the culture. One important source of recent Colombian pride that's relevant to younger Colombians is the recent Disney movie Encanto, which won an Oscar. The movie has been praised for representing authentic Colombian culture, making it a great tool for making connections to Colombia. Tip number two. Another thing teachers of Colombian immigrants need to know is that students from a lower socioeconomic status may be undocumented. 
Due to political instability and economic fallout from the COVID-19 pandemic, there has been an increase in the number of Colombians fleeing for the United States, looking for safety and opportunities. Remember, regardless of a student or parent's immigration status, the U.S. Supreme Court's 1982 landmark decision in Plyer v. Doe protects a child's right to a K-12 education in America's public schools. For this reason, teachers should be aware of the possibility a student is undocumented and take extra steps to ensure the student and family's basic needs are being met and provide that child with equitable learning opportunities. Tip number three. One more thing for teachers to know about Colombian students is that most celebrate Christmas because it's a Catholic tradition. In fact, this major celebration goes on for weeks in Colombia. Special events begin December 7th with Day of the Little Candles, which is the night before the Immaculate Conception. Then, beginning December 16th is Christmas Novena, a nine-day period of prayer leading up to Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve, families eat a large meal called Cena de Navidad and then attend a midnight mass church service, often staying up all night. Christmas Day is a day of rest followed by Holy Innocence Day on December 28th, which marks the end of the Christmas period. As you can see, Christmas is a great opportunity to share and learn about Colombian traditions from students. Resources for video